What's up everyone? It is Destiny Michonne with Better AMS and today we are going to be walking through Amazon Advertising Part 3. So this video series has been a little bit more complex to make because some of the topics we are diving into are very dependent on your goals and strategy. So I wanted to keep it pretty light and conversational as we walk through these different slides. And rather than saying this is exactly what you need to do, I wanted you to walk through and see what our strategies were and then kind of talk through why we kind of decided on those strategies. Now, there's a lot of different variables in place with this topic and there's you know different ways that you can do something and still be successful. So I'm just gonna walk you through our recommendations and explain those. So what we're gonna be diving into today is the proper campaign structure for scalability. We're gonna talk about starting bids, which is always a hot topic of conversation on the YouTube post. And then we're gonna also dive into kind of starting budgets and how to do a better job at allocating proper budgets. And then the last thing we are gonna talk about is we're lightly gonna discuss different launch strategies and different recommendations we have. So hopefully this is extremely beneficial. If you guys have any questions or you know if this opens up any other questions that I need to answer, go ahead and comment. Or if you think that this is potential to help anyone, definitely feel free to tag them and share it. So let's dive in. The first big topic that we wanted to discuss is when you're starting a manual campaign, what is the best way to structure your campaigns? So we always recommend one campaign, one ad group, and possibly one product. So this is highly controversial because a lot of people recommend running multiple ad groups just so you don't have, you know, a thousand different campaigns running. Now, the main reason we recommend running one ad group is for better budget allocation, easier analysis from campaign manager, and better control over our ASIN's performance. Now, the reason we recommend that is due to this right here. So let's say I have one campaign with three ad groups. If I am setting a budget, it is on the campaign level, not the ad group level. So let's say I have three ad groups running like this. A popular scenario is to do one ad group for broad, one ad group for phrase, one ad group for exact. So keep that in mind. It's similarly running like this. And we have one ad group that's performing incredible, one ad group that's performing meh, and one ad group that's, you know, running at a decent ACOS. My issue with this structure is it makes it difficult to scale. Ideally, what we'd want to have is this one, you know, running and scaling with its own budget. We're like, hey, that's a 10% ACOS, let's give it more budget, let's keep it directly with the ASIN and let's scale. Now we can't do that in this structure because budgeting's on the campaign level. So my average ACOS here, depending on what the spend is, is probably much higher. It's probably like 50%, you know, 60% average ACOS. So if I'm scrolling through campaign manager, that's what I'm gonna see, which means I'm probably gonna lower my budget because you know I don't want all my money going to something that's bleeding and not profitable. When in reality, what we need to do is give more budget to this ad group. So that's the main reason we run one campaign, one ad group with specific product is so we have direct control over the budgeting and scalability of that campaign. Um, I do have a few examples of that as well. Another reason is if you're running multiple ad groups, Amazon is typically gonna give the majority of your spend to one ad group. Now on small scale, you don't typically see this because you don't have enough budget to really be distributed. But when we're looking at spending quite a bit of money, you can see the numbers pretty drastically. One ad group is typically gonna get the majority of your budget. Amazon's, Amazon's gonna be like, you know, this one has high click-through rate. Let's give it the majority of the budget to spend more, even if it's not necessarily the top converting campaign or ad group. So as you can see here, here is a direct screenshot from one of the accounts that we audited. And here's what we saw. They had, you know, 15, 10, 15 ad groups running within a campaign. One of those ad groups was getting the majority of the spend to collect data, which is this one. And it's running at 11% ACOS, which is fantastic. But these ad groups are still getting budget, even though the ACOS isn't near as high. And then we have, you know, this ad group, which is hardly getting any budget. This is year to date and it's only getting $14 in spend. Why? Because our budget's going to this ad group, which is performing incredibly well, even though this one's at a 10% ACOS. 
Ideally, we have this ad group in its own campaign so I can tell exactly what my money's going to and then give it more budget because it's performing incredibly well. We can also scale the bids directly. So this is the main reason we look at doing one ad group. Um, another reason is so we can make sure that we can influence all the placements on a page. So that's something big that we're really gonna look into. Uh, another quick example, we typically recommend one product per campaign as well for the exact same reasons. Typically, Amazon's gonna give the majority of your budget to one product, even though it may not be the top performing product. So this product is getting the majority of our budget, looks like over 50%, and it's running you know, at 294 ROAS. So it's not bad, it's doing well, it's within our target ACOS goals, but we have this product, which is getting much, much less spend year to date, even though it is doing incredible at 372. So ideally this product is running in its own campaign so I can increase the budget specifically for that product because it's doing well. Now there are a few scenarios where maybe we do want to put similar products in a campaign. Apparel is typically a great example. If you have a small, a medium, a large, all different ASINs, you probably want to put those all in one campaign and split test whatever's going to do best. But if you're doing you know, a white t-shirt, black t-shirt, red t-shirt, you want those to be in their own campaigns so you can win more placements on the page and directly control your budget for your red t-shirt that maybe does not convert as well on t-shirt as your black t-shirt does. So that's kind of our main reasonings for always running one campaign, one ad group, and one ASIN. Now here's what it typically looks like. One campaign, one ad group, one product. Here's some of the nomenclature that we use. So feel free to take a screenshot of this page, but we always start with a product identifier because I personally cannot memorize the ASINs for all of my accounts. So we always start with what the product is, soccer ball. We put the ASIN if we're wanting to search within campaign manager by ASIN. Um, and then we put the type of campaign. So this is a sponsored product search term report. And then the next thing we always put is maybe a key call out. So for example, this one's broad. Now we could do soccer ball sponsored brands search term report broad. We don't put an ASIN typically in sponsored brands because there's multiple ASINs. And then if we're doing a sponsored display, I didn't mean to put broad here, but it would be soccer ball, ASIN, sponsored display product targeting. And then we could put, you know, only targeting products that have less reviews, things like that. So that's how we structure our campaigns. And another big reason we do one campaign per product is this right here. So if you're really looking to drive additional scalability, if you wanna win all of the placements for your top keywords, you need them to be in their own campaigns. So great example, we are winning you know, every single placement for a keyword because there is a campaign for every single ASIN. It's not one campaign with four ASINs, then we wouldn't win all the placements. It is one campaign, per ASIN targeting the same keywords. Now I know a lot of people out there recommend negating a keyword that you move from broad to exact or an auto campaign to exact, but the core of the matter is you won't win more placements that way. If you wanna win all of your placements for your top keywords, these are kind of strategies that you need to implement. So all in all, that is how we structure our campaigns at scale. And the next question I always get is starting bids. <laughs> so this is always a fun topic. Now I do want to start off by saying I think people overthink their starting bids because at its core, there is no minimum required for Amazon for starting a campaign, which means we can test small and scale up. So I could start a campaign targeting one keyword at a five cent bid. If within 48 hours I don't get any impressions, I can increase it to 20 cents. If after 48 hours I don't get impressions, I can increase it. So it doesn't really matter what your starting bid is if you're running proper bid optimization. No impressions, increase your bid. If you're getting you know, terrible performance, decrease your bid. But if you really wanted to kind of get more control over that, here's some of the things that we do look at. What is the price of your product and what is the goal of your targeting? So the main reason we look at the price of the product is to know what kind of conversion rate we're gonna to need to see to be profitable with our keywords. And then another thing we looked at is what are the goal of our targeting? So if I'm wanting to win top of search for my top keyword, I'm probably going to need to bid much higher and I'm probably not going to expect to break even or have a good ACOS. So if I sell a blue pin, and I want to win top of search for blue pin. 
I could just type it into a manual campaign and see what my suggested bid is. This is going to be a good average. And if my suggested bid is $7 to win blue pin and my product is $7, I'm not going to be profitable. So these are just different things we look at. But at its core, let's say, you know, the price of our product is $20. Better AMS as a whole typically likes to get around eight clicks per keyword before making a bid adjustment. So based off that, let's say I'm selling a $20 product. I have one keyword I'm really trying to win and it's gonna be a $2 bid. So if it takes me eight clicks and I get one order at a $2 CPC, so that means my cost per click is exactly what I'm bidding on, then that means my spin's gonna be $16. So if I look at my spin divided my sales, that means my ACOS is gonna be 80 cents. So with that assumption, I would probably lower my bid for that keyword in the beginning. I would start with a $1 bid, which means if I get eight clicks in one order, I spent $8. And if I have a $20 product, that means my ACOS is much lower. It's what, 40% maybe, if my math's right, which I don't think it is, <laughs> or it is right. But those are kind of the things you wanna look at. Now, let's say I have a higher price product. That means your starting bids can be a little bit more aggressive because you have more wiggle room. You can spend more money and still be profitable. If you have a lower price point product, your bids are gonna be need to be lower. Now, the reason we look at eight clicks before making an adjustment is just because it takes a lot of data. So if I were to set a 10 cent bid and not collect any data, then I just need to increase my bid a little bit till I get more bids or more clicks, more impressions. If I still don't get a lot of clicks and impressions, increase my bid. And then when I start getting eight clicks, let's say no one purchased, I can lower my bid a little bit. Or you can wait. I mean, we have scenarios where we've had 50 clicks in one order, which is not a fantastic conversion rate, but our bid was at like 50 cents. So it was $25 we spent our product was $50, that's a 50% ACOS. So when you start looking into scalability, those are kind of the metrics that you wanna look at. But all in all, if you're not sure what your conversion rate is or anything on your advertising perspective, start low, work your way up. Or if you wanna be extremely aggressive, look at your suggested bids and start with that. And then once you start collecting data, you can go from there. But always make data-based decisions. If you start with a $2 bid and you get 20 clicks off the bat and no orders, lower your bid to a dollar and then see. Things like that are kind of how you need to start adjusting your thinking. Just make sure you have data to justify your decision. Now, starting budgets. This is another hot topic I always get asked about and I think it's another scenario that's also overthought. But the biggest thing is how much are you bidding and how many keywords are you bidding on? So let's say I have one campaign and I'm planning on uploading 20 keywords and I'm planning on setting a $2 bid for those 20 keywords. And based off better AMS philosophy that we need to get eight clicks to have enough data to make a decision, that would mean we will be spending $320 per day. Now, of course, Amazon's not gonna evenly distribute your budget across all your keywords, and Amazon's not going to give every single keyword the same amount of spend, so that's not necessarily realistic that you're gonna hit all those spin targets, but it's kind of the way to look at it. If you're planning on you know, launching 20 keywords and you set a $5 a day budget, you're not gonna collect data on those keywords very quickly because you're only gonna have $5 to spend. So one keyword may spend $5. And if you're bidding $1, that means that $5 of spend is still not gonna collect enough data to make an optimization if you're wanting to get to eight clicks per keyword. So these are kind of the things that we think about when creating starting budgets for our campaigns. We wanna know how many keywords we're targeting and then how much data we wanna collect on those keywords and compare that to the bid. Another unrealistic scenario is let's say I have a $10 daily budget and 200 keywords. This is something I see pretty often. You're not gonna collect data very quickly across those 200 keywords because if I have $1 bids for all 200 keywords and every single keyword got one click, that means I would spend $200 in one day. But since I only have a $10 daily budget, 
it's not going to evenly distribute across those keywords. So these are the scenarios we kind of dive into when looking at daily budgets. Um, for this example, again, it's not going to be evenly skewed. Amazon's not going to take your daily budget and do, you know, 10 divided by 200. If they did, you would only have five cents to bid on every single keyword and you'd only get one click a day. But that's kind of how you need to look at your budget setting. Now here's an entry level bid formula I'm going to throw in here. This is something that we recommend when just getting pulse checks on your keyword performance. But at its core, if a keyword is not profitable, the first thing you should do is adjust your bid. Your bid is the foundation of everything Amazon advertising. Now, let's say I'm selling an Apple phone charger and I have the keyword Android phone charger. That's not relevant to my product at all. So I would probably just pause it. That's a scenario where that keyword probably would not be profitable. But if I'm selling Apple phone charger and someone is looking up Apple accessories and my ACOS is 77% and my bid is $1.50 and my clicks are 50, which means clicks times bid equals $75 in spend. Let's say I got some orders that drove $97 in sales. I can do the math. So I'm gonna take the sales for that keyword times it by my target ACOS. So $97 in sales times 30% ACOS. That's gonna tell me my maximum spend. So I can only spend, which is $29.10 if I'm basing it off this conversion rate. So I'm then gonna take that maximum spend and divide it by the number of clicks I have. So if I have 50 clicks, I'm gonna see 29.10 divided by 50, which means my maximum bid, it needs to be 58 cents based off that data. So now if I do 58 cents times 50 clicks, my spin's gonna be $29 divided by 97 means my ACOS will be at 30%. So that's a quick formula to run to check that your bid is correct, but you need data to run this formula. So that's just something I kind of wanted to throw in there for you to get a pulse check. If you have any keyword that's like 100% ACOS, look at what your bid is and see what you can adjust it to to make it perform better. Now, oftentimes, if the keyword is performing terribly and you run this formula, maybe it has a 200% ACOS, your cost per click or your, your recommended bid could be like 10 cents. And if it's at 10 cents, it's probably not gonna get any impressions. So you could bid too low. So you kind of need to find that threshold between what's too low of a bid and what's a profitable bid. Now, the good news with that is if I bid too low, it's the same as pausing a keyword, which is what a lot of you guys do anyways. So instead of pausing a keyword, look for your proper bid, because that means you may get sales just a lot cheaper. The reason this is a great call out is, for example, I work in the healthy food category and we were bidding on the term whole foods. We had like a hundred clicks in one order, which is terrible conversion rate, but it was like a 10 cent bid which meant we only spent $10 on all those clicks, which made the keyword profitable. Why this is fantastic is because if your competitors run out of budget or stop bidding on a keyword, you're gonna get that keyword for really cheap. So even though it's a 10 cent bid and you're rarely gonna get impressions, if you do get impressions, they're gonna be cheap and could be profitable. So it's an incremental way to increase your scalability. Now, let me grab a quick, quick drink before we hop into the subject. Top recommendations for launching. Now there is 90 different mathematical strategies for Amazon advertising and launching, but every single one of them is dependent on your brand's goals, your budget, your category, your competition, all of these different factors. So there is no top recommendation for launching. It's ever changing. So the foundation we look for at Better AMS is aligning that strategy with your guys' different goals. So if you have a small budget and you're profitability focused, we typically recommend running exact match and manual campaigns. Now, almost everyone recommends running auto campaigns on a launch. The main reason we don't, if you have a small budget and you're profitability focused, is because auto campaigns are based on Amazon's ability to know your products. So if you haven't seen my video on auto campaigns, watch that next. 
But if you're a brand new product and maybe your SEO and back end isn't fantastic, Amazon's not gonna know your product up front. So what they're gonna do is show your ads in all these different placements until they can find out what consumers like your ad best. So it's a great way to spend money and not get sales in the beginning because Amazon doesn't know your product. Now, if you're willing to run that campaign in order to collect data, a thousand percent start with the auto campaigns. They're amazing for data collection. But if you have a small amount of budget and you don't wanna spend it on data collection and testing, start with a manual campaign. Because with a manual campaign, you are picking exactly where you want your ads to show. So if I'm selling a blue pin, I'm gonna bid on blue pin. But if I start an auto campaign, Amazon may show my ad for office supplies or they're gonna show my ad for calculator because they don't know it's a blue pin yet. And then when they figure out there's correlation between blue pin and blue pin, my auto campaign's gonna start performing much better. But that's why we recommend knowing the difference between the two and knowing your goals. Now, we also recommend starting with exact match with smaller bids and budgets because you're gonna have direct control over where your ad's showing. So if I do blue pin broad, my ad may show up with blue pin for toddler. And maybe it's not a blue pin for toddlers. Maybe it's a blue pin for calligraphy, things like that. But if I do blue pin for calligraphy exact, I'm gonna know exactly where that's showing. So in general at scale, better AMS runs in broad phrase and exact in all scenarios because we're ability to, that's our data collection methodology. And that's how we scale because broad typically drives way more in sales than manual and exact. But on a launch, if you want direct control over where your ad showing and your profitability focus, then broad and phrase may not be best for you. Now, if you have a higher budget and you're willing to collect data, auto campaigns are great and broad and phrase are great. Now, another scenario is if you are again open to scalability data collection, you can launch your autos with really low bids. So that way Amazon can collect data in the background, but you don't spend a ton of money. Um, the third thing is no matter what, when you're launching, you can always start small, collect data and make decisions later on. So when you're looking at your bids, you don't need to bid three to $4 per keyword up front if you don't want to and you don't have the budget for that. You can start with 50 cent bids on all of your keywords. And if you don't get you know any data within 24 hours, 48 hours, increase the bids by 20 cents increase the bids even more. That's kind of the best way to really scale with data. Now, of course, you're not gonna rank on page one within 48 hours, but it's gonna be much more profitable. And ideally, you guys are in the mindset of, you know, long-term growth versus instant gratification. So if need be, you can always start small, collect data, and then make database decisions off of that data. So those are our top recommend recommendations for launching. I know it's, you know, no golden nuggets or hacks or anything like that, but these are the things we really look at in order to set a strong foundation and to hopefully give everyone insights on how to launch, not just spe specific scenarios, things like that. Um, only other thing I wanted to add is quick tips for optimizing. <laughs> If you have low impressions, you're not getting a lot of data, increase your bid. Um, it could be a relevancy issue. Maybe Amazon doesn't think your blue pin should be bidding on calculator, so they're not gonna give you any traffic. But the majority of the time, what we see is it's a bid issue. Maybe suggested bids are $2 and you're bidding 60 cents and you're not getting any traffic, increase your bid. Or maybe the scenario is there's just not a lot of people searching for the keywords that you're bidding on. If that's the case, it doesn't necessarily hurt to increase your bid. Um, it's just diving into the keyword research and seeing why that keyword is low impression. Or maybe your back end's not set up to index. And if you don't have a great back end or fantastic SEO, your Amazon ads will probably have some type of negative impact on that. Um, second thing, you have a poor ACOS, decrease your bid. So <laughs> two basic strategies, which of course need other foundational knowledge, but at its core, if you have 100% ACOS, one of the first things you should probably do is look at your bid and kind of run that formula and see if maybe you should be bidding less or figure out if maybe it's a placement. So you can also see your placement data, which will probably be in the next video. But all in all, that is our quick tips and recommendations for campaign structure. Um, starting bids, starting budgets, and launch, launch strategy. So let me know if you guys have anything else. Thank you so much for watching this, and hopefully everyone has a fantastic weekend. Bye, guys.